Welcome back internet. I'm going to go ahead and talk here for a couple of minutes about GMOs because I've gotten a lot of questions about them and uh, anybody who knows me knows that I'm a little bit passionate about this subject because I really do believe that uh, GMOs are uh, a good thing for our future and they're going to help us be able to farm better in the future. Um, and First off I want to say that I don't work for any big company. I don't sell seed or any of these products. I'm a farmer. I use this technology and these products. I'm not forced to use them like some people some people seem to believe on the internet. I don't know anybody who is forced to use these products. And uh, I'm not really here to debate over whether you think these companies who offer these products are good companies or not. Uh, I just want to offer my opinion on what I believe about the technology and about the products. Uh, and first I want to say um, we've been modifying our food all throughout history. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different vegetables and fruits that are seedless now or maybe they're a different color or they're larger than what you would find in nature um, and, and that topic's been hit on before Neil deGrasse Tyson has talked about that a lot you can you can look up his thoughts on YouTube about how we've been modifying food throughout history and now we're able to do it under a microscope we're able to take a microscope in a lab and change an exact thing about a plant and um, you know, we are able to change things about those plants that we wouldn't be able to change by just using uh, cross-hybridization in, out in nature by, by crossing hybrids and stuff like that. So now we can do it, do things in a lab that we weren't able to do before. Uh, and, you know, uh, a lot of people believe that maybe GMOs aren't safe. Uh, GMOs, <clears throat> from what I understand, are actually uh, one of the most studied foods in the history of the world. And uh, there's really no credible, no credible studies saying that uh, GMOs are not safe. Um, there's a lot of skeptical people out there who wonder about them, but uh, there's no studies that say that they're they're harming health. And we've been growing them now for over 20 years, and um, we really don't know of any any uh, bad side effects from from eating genetically modified food or genetically engineered crops. Um, so. The organic industry is able to, I believe, market based off of kind of the unknown. And they're able to use a lot of fear because most people have a normal job. Most people don't work with the land and the soil and the plants every day. Uh, most people have to get up and go do whatever it is they do really well every day. And, and they're just hoping to feed their families safe food. And so the organic industry is able to kind of market off of that based on you know, words like GMO and genetically modified, stuff that sounds scary. And when you slap an organic label on something, it makes you feel good about it. You think you're you're buying something that's got to be healthier for your family than it would be otherwise. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll pull that off the shelf and buy that and feed that to your family because uh, it's organic. So uh, you know there's no risk in that, but this over here is not organic and you're not sure uh, what's been sprayed on it or or how it's been grown or what's in the genetics of that crop. Um, but the fact is that we can just, um, we can change that food now under the microscope. And I think it's a responsibility that we have to be careful with. Um, or it's a technology that we have to be careful with. I think um, we could make mistakes there, but I also think there's a lot of advantages to using it. Um, Number one is uh, we're going to have to embrace new technologies in the future uh, in order to feed a, a growing population in the world. And um, yeah, there are millions of acres of, of undeveloped land that probably could be farmed, but can you develop it fast enough to feed the, the population of the world that's at the same rate? Um, and I don't, I don't believe you can. Um, you can go online and find whatever study you want that says you could. You could also find whatever study you want that says you can't. But, um, you know, uh, when Dr. Oz goes on TV and talks about um, seeds and crops being drenched in pesticides, um, things like that couldn't be more wrong. This is a technology that I think we need to embrace so that we can farm more responsibly and actually more sustainably using things like GMOs because genetically modified crops allow us to, uh, you know, they, they can allow things like using less water, um, different uh, nutrients, higher nutrient levels um, in the food, in the vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, I know for us, genetically modified corn allows us to not have to spray any pesticide on our corn for, for several years now. And when people talk about, you know, drenching your, 
your crop in pesticide because of the GMO crops, uh, they're just wrong. The fact is I'm out here doing it and I know that that's not true. We're actually using a lot less. And um, the stuff that we are using right now is Roundup, which scares everybody. But um, Roundup is actually one of the safest safest chemicals we have available to us. And and uh, so I don't have any, any questions there about, um, you know, using it safely and, and actually having it be more sustainable for our land and and for for nature for us um for the earth because if 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 i didn't believe it was right i wouldn't want to put it on my soil because that soil is how i make my living it's how i feed my family and and the world and if i don't have healthy soils uh you know in in my career if i don't have good soils i don't really have a job i don't have anything um and you know uh the organic industry can can put that label on anything they can put uh they can put non gmo on a salt container and charge a little bit more for it because it makes somebody feel safer about the salt that they're buying um which you know there's a lot of crazy stuff out there like that salt doesn't have genetics to modify salt is a mineral of course it's non gmo uh you know and that, and that's the same way when I talk about dr oz uh he had a show about this the new uh enlist duo uh, GMO pesticide. Uh, first off, it's not new. Um, it's just a product that's available to us now with two different forms of, of a herbicide in it that we've been using forever. Um, it's Roundup and, uh, and 2,4-D. And those are two of the oldest chemicals that we've got. Uh, they're just, we're able to buy them in a, one container now. So that's what's new about it. It's not new technology. It's not new chemicals. And it also doesn't have genetics to modify, so how can, you know, how can he say that this is a, a, a GMO pesticide? I'm not sure what he was trying to say there, but um, in my opinion, uh, he's uh, an entertainer more than he is a doctor, and certainly more than he is a scientist. Um, I got some notes here about uh, people who have questioned me on things. Um, the rat study, where the rats got big tumors. Uh, they used a type of rat that gets gets uh, a lot of cancer anyway. It's known, really well known for getting a lot of tumors. Uh, and in that study, uh, they didn't have a control group. And uh, th so there's no data on the control group of, of what happened to the rats that uh, weren't in the experiment over, you know, over here that were were different from, from the rats that were being fed GMOs uh separate from the ones that weren't being fed GMOs that were being fed something else. So they didn't have a control group. And uh, it was really just an attempt to uh, get people in an uproar using sensationalism by uh, uh, choosing a rat that has uh, is known for getting these big, ugly tumors on it. So that's my opinion on that study. Um, people have also questioned me about the bees. You know, what are we going to do about the bees? Well, First off, I'm talking about GMOs here, and uh, genetically modified crops really have nothing to do with killing the bees. Um, the, the, the chemical that uh, is in question for harming the bees is neonicotinoids, which we use as a uh, seed a seed treatment, and uh, we put it on the seed before we plant it. When we plant it in the ground, it helps to protect that seed in cold, wet soils if that seed doesn't take off very quickly and it ends up sitting there for a couple weeks. Uh, neonics on that seed can help to protect it from uh, bugs that will get in there and eat it and kill off the seed. And so neonics really have nothing to do with genetically modified crops or genetically engineered crops. We put neonics on our seed uh, long before we had GMOs. And so they really, they're, they're, not, um, they're not even related. Um, Roundup, I touched on that. It's actually one of our safest herbicides. Um, people get mad if uh, GMOs are safe. Why don't we just label them then? Well, in my opinion, because in this country, we use labels as warnings. And if we're going to throw a, a label on something for something that's perfectly safe, when GMOs aren't dangerous, why do we need to throw a label on there that says, warning, this product contains GMOs? We don't really need to warn people against it because there's nothing dangerous about it. And um, on top of it, I think it would be expensive and pointless because you're buying the exact same food, whether it's GMO or not anyway, most of the time. So, uh... In my opinion, there's there's really no point to it. Um, if they're if if the consumer is going to demand it, uh, I guess also in my opinion, if the consumers are all going to demand it, then um, fine, we'll go ahead and label it. But uh, we should have a national national law on that so that everything is um, uniform across the board, so that we don't have uh, 
states trying to come up with their own state laws that uh, kind of throw things throw things for a loop and get expensive for the companies to have to come up with a different label for every state and however they would have to try and work that. Um, people say that organic food tastes so much better. I don't know, probably uh, tastes like placebo in my opinion most of the time. Um, Europe banned GMOs, so uh, they've got to be dangerous. Um, yeah, I think Europe banned GMOs to protect their own farmers and their own economy because if uh, they ban GMOs, all of a sudden they can't uh, import GMOs, GMO crops from America. They've got to buy their own farmers' crops. I think uh, it was a pl political move on their part. I don't think it really had a lot to do with, with uh, the safety, questioning the safety of genetically modified crops. Uh, same way when, uh, when China decided that um, they were going to turn down our GMO corn, um, what it was was it was a specific trait that had been uh, uh, approved for use over in the U.S. here, but it hadn't been approved for use in China. China didn't care for a long time that, that they were importing this grain, and um, all of a sudden when, uh, when they realized they had a lot of high contracts where they were going to have to buy expensive grain from us that they had committed to, they said, well, wait a second here, um, we haven't approved this, this genetically modified trait. So uh, that gives us the right to back out of all these huge contracts, and um, after that happened, um, it basically completely crashed the corn market because we had all this leftover corn that all of a sudden we didn't have a buyer for. And um, lo and behold, a couple of months later, China said, well, you know what, it's okay, we'll go ahead and buy your corn. I guess it wasn't too big of a deal anyway, and they approved it. And uh, so, in my opinion, they were kind of just playing games there. Um, I've heard about uh, corn that uh, when insects or worms eat it, their stomachs explode. Well, that's kind of true, but people assume that since a bug's stomach is going to explode, it, it must uh, kill us too. It's going to hurt our stomach. Uh, that's wrong. Our stomachs are not the same as a caterpillar's stomach. Um, we, have, uh, we have acidic stomachs. They have alkaline stomachs. What's in that corn is Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis. When they eat it, they can't digest it, and uh, it, it does uh, eventually kill them. And uh, you and I eat Bt almost every day. You probably have some on you right now. And uh, you'll never know any different. You're going to eat some of it tomorrow, and it's not going to be a problem. You'll never know. It won't, it won't be an issue. And uh, in fact, uh, <clears throat> organic farmers, a lot of the time, will use uh, BT and, and use a much higher dosage. They'll mix it up in a liquid, and they'll actually spray it on their corn uh, for the same reason that we use it in our genetically modified corn. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. A lot of people are surprised to hear that. Um, and in my opinion... GMOs can help a lot, uh, you know, with, with a lot of different things besides just the environmental stuff that I've kind of hit on a little bit. Uh, you know, things like golden rice, they can help to prevent thousands of Asian children from going blind every year because of the, um, the, uh, the uh, vitamin A that they can put into the rice that uh, is causing them to go blind from the deficiency of it. Um, things like citrus greening, which has completely decimated the uh, Florida citrus crop to my understanding. Um, we could come up with trees that would uh, uh, be tolerant to this citrus greening or be, um, I guess from what I know about it, they, they would be basically immune to it. Um, but they're kind of afraid to get it out there and push it and plant those trees because they've had so much pushback from consumers. So um, that's kind of a sad, sad deal uh, that it's being met with so much uh, skepticism. Um, and, uh, you know, for me as a farmer personally, it kind of puts me in a moral dilemma because I believe that as a farmer I have a responsibility to uh, raise healthy food for the world as efficiently and as sustainably as I can. And in my opinion, that means using genetically engineered crops. Um, on the, on the same, on, on the, in the same kind of thought process, I also believe that I have a responsibility to the consumers to raise the food that they demand. If they don't want genetically modified crops, then um, I have a responsibility to raise them crops that uh, are not genetically modified. And so for me, it really puts me in a, in a tough spot, you know, kind of a moral dilemma. But, um, you know, next time the food babe or Dr. Oz says that we're out here drenching our soils in these terrible, terrible um, chemicals, just remember that uh, we're the farmers that are actually out here doing, doing this kind of work. And I'm telling you otherwise, it's not like that. I really believe in this technology. I believe... I believe this is the future. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Thanks for watching. Follow me on uh, Instagram and Facebook as well.